my pleasure to describe this afternoon United States Air Force Air. F-16 Fighting Falcon, piloted by Captain Ryan Corrigan, and, and a United States Air Force F-22 Raptor, piloted by Major David Skalitsky. salutes the flag, who serves beneath the flag, whose coffin is draped by the flag, who gives the protester the right to burn the flag.
Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of General William Frazier III, the F-22 Raptor Demonstration Team, and all of Air Combat Command, we hope you've enjoyed watching and taking pride in this rare glance at over 60 years of Air Force heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for your United States Air Force Heritage Flight. Thank you, Gap. Thank you, JC. Greg Gappert with the Raptor demo team and John Coleman narrating for the F-16 demo team. Now, a few moments ago, you saw that P-51 Mustang in formation with the F-22 Raptor that's just now touching down, the F-16 Fighting Falcon that will be touching down in just a moment, and we're going to get a chance to see that P-51 Mustang up close and personal. We have two lost children, Donnie Alvarez and Mario Miras. They are at the Lost Child Center. Please, parents, go pick them up. The Lost Child Center is located near show control behind the show area between hangars two and three. Closer to hangar two, but back there behind us, you can see the numbers on the hangars. Vipers down. The Mustang will be inbound. Believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, the P-51 Mustang, as you see it diving in from the right right now, let's just listen to this. Listen to this engine. The P-51 Mustang was actually developed for the Royal Air Force, not the American Army Air Force. It was back in 1940, prior to the United States' entry into World War II, that the British Purchasing Commission approached North American Aviation's president, Dutch Kindleberger, and said, Dutch, we want you to build some P-40 Warhawks for us under license. Let me explain how that came about. Before we got into the war on the 8th of December of 1941, we were supplying Harvard trainers, or North American Texan trainers, which the Royal Air Force called Harvards, to the Royal Air Force and Royal Canadian Air Force as advanced trainers. The Royal Air Force really liked the way that North American built airplanes. They were also using Curtis P-40 Warhawks alongside the Royal Air Force Hawker Hurricanes and Supermarine Spitfires. And they needed more fighters and they thought North American could take care of that. Well, Dutch Kindleberger, when they came to him and said, we want you to build a Curtis airplane under license, he said, no, we want to build our own airplane. Give us 120 days. And believe it or not, in 120 days, an airframe very much like the one you see before you now was delivered to the Royal Air Force. Some books say 117 days. It had in it the same power plant as the P-40 Warhawk. It was an Allison V-12 liquid-cooled engine. But in the Mustang, it did not perform well enough at altitude. And so, the Royal Air Force took a V-12 Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. Let's listen again. They took a Rolls-Royce V-12 Merlin engine, the same type that was used in their Supermarine Spitfires and Hawker Hurricanes put it in a Mustang, and the Mustang as we see it now was born. Over 15,000 were built during World War II by North American Aviation. About 160 remain flyable today. As Ryder Corrigan comes by in the Shaw Air Force Base F-16, give him a wave. As Dale Snodgrass 
does a beautiful barrel roll over show center, right over top. What a great picture that is. 1% of the Mustangs that were built, approximately, remain pliable today. And Dale Snodgrass is one of the handful of people in the country qualified to fly the Cadillac of the sky. Let me tell you a little bit about the pilot of the P-51 Mustang. He's a retired Navy captain. He retired from the Navy in 1999 after a distinguished career. One of the number one Tomcat pilots, F-14 Tomcat pilots anywhere. Here comes Zeke Skalitsky from Langley Air Force Base in the F-22 Raptor. You can wave at him as well. What a great sight it is. As Snort Snodgrass does the eight-point hesitation roll, no, a four-point hesitation roll across the show line. Dale Snodgrass was one of the first pilots to go into F-14 Tomcat training. For 12 years, Dale Snodgrass, call sign Snort, was the F-14 demonstration pilot for the United States Navy, traveling from one coast to the other, demonstrating the capabilities of that incredible airplane for a dozen years. Again from the left, here comes the Mustang in a low pass. Now you see how low he's going there. Some of you who are aviation aficionados may remember a picture on the internet that showed up a number of years ago and it has been circulated around several times of an F-14 Tomcat in knife edge or 90 degrees worth of bank right next to an aircraft carrier. That aircraft carrier was the Stennis. Now get your cameras ready. He's going to come in low and to the right and this will be a photo pass. He'll be banking sharply so you can look right down into the office. Over your shoulder and to the right, here comes Snort. 1,700 horsepower. The Packard-built, Rolls-Royce-designed Merlin engine. Let me get back to that picture of the aircraft carrier Stennis and the Tomcat in 90 degrees of bank going by. The bottom of the right wing was actually obscured by the deck of the carrier. It was so low. And it said in the caption of that picture that, that the pilot was grounded for 30 days because of that incident. Well, that's not the case. It was an air show at sea for sailors and their families and their dependents. And the pilot of that particular F-14 Tomcat was none other than the man you see going by you right now, Dale Snort Snodgrass, who at that time was in charge of all the F-14 Tomcats in the Navy. As he rolls upside down, extends the landing gear, and he'll be coming into land in just a moment. Some of you have asked over the, time, over the, the course of several seasons, what are those stripes on the airplane? The stripes were painted on all Allied aircraft prior to the June 6, 1944 D-Day invasion of the German troops at Normandy, France. And uh, it was done to all of our friendly aircraft, all Allied aircraft, so that they would not be shot down by friendly fire from the ground or from the air in a dogfight. And that's why those stripes are there. They are known as invasion stripes. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause for the pilot of the Cadillac of the Skies, former U.S. Navy Captain Dale Snort Snodgrass. North American aviation has been responsible for so much innovation as have so many of the companies that have been responsible for developing the latest in technology. With a liquid-cooled engine, this P-51 Mustang had to have a radiator. And so they put this scoop on the bottom, designers fearing that it would not have enough 
that it would cause actually cause drag and slow the airplane down. But the way the air flowed through that into that scoop and out the back actually gave it a few pounds of jet-like thrust. They called it Meredith effect and it actually speeded up the airplane. At the top of that scoop, there's a little separation of about an inch from the bottom of the fuselage, and that same piece of 1940s technology has been carried into the United States Air Force's F-16 Fighting Falcon. Back in 1999, they're short. Andrews Federal Credit Union is proud to be a sponsor of the Joint Service Open House. We've met the financial needs of men and women serving at Joint Base Andrews for over 60 years. Let us assist you with your financial needs, too. Stop by the booth today to find out more about great loan rates and low-cost financial services. Visit us online at www.andrewsfcu.org or give us a call at 800-487-5500 to learn more. We look forward to serving you.